I'm not huge on writing regular reviews as such, because I feel like it's very easy to fall into a trap of writing the same stuff over and over. If you've never played a game with the intent to review or make content on it, then you're not really missing out on much. It can very much alter the way you look at something, because you're constantly thinking of things to comment on or point out, and you risk missing the forest for the trees. A lot of the time, it's the media that I play on a whim, with no intentions of talking about it all, that end up being the most interesting. The kind of game that you stumble across and wonder why nobody else is talking about them. This video is about one of those games. I'm not a huge fan of classic adventure games, but when I think about the ones I do enjoy, they all have something in common. They're a little bit weird. Smile For Me is one of these weird adventure games. The game takes place in The Habitat, a place where wayward souls go to live and supposedly get happy. What does that mean? Well, no one really knows, except the owner, Dr. Habit. The game begins with a website describing the habitat in less than perfect detail, but it says there are three rules. Come cause you're sad, leave cause you're happy, and if that doesn't work, wait for the big event. The website for promoting the game actually shows a more in-depth version of this, and straight away it smacks of everything I enjoy. There's a sinister undertone to everything, and that becomes even clearer once you actually enter the habitat. The basic premise is simple. Solve puzzles and interact with your fellow habitations in order to make them smile. And once you make all 22 characters happy, you win. You play as Flower Kid, an entirely ambiguous character with no canonical age or gender. Called this because there were florists from the local town. The ambiguity of the main character is where the game shines. While many games will have you choosing dialogue options and chatting away with characters in order to gain their trust, Flower Kid is entirely mute. The only way you can interact with any of your fellow habitations is by nodding or shaking your head. With a lot of silent protagonists, there's often the implication that they are talking sometimes, we just can't hear them. But not with this little flower child. The game is split into days, with you waking up in the morning, exploring until nighttime, then falling asleep and doing it all over again. Each morning, Dr. Habit gives a little talk in the form of these puppet shows, which is a good segue into talking about the art. Smile For Me was made almost entirely by two people, the immensely talented Hugo Limbo and Gabe Lane. Yugo contributed the art and general aesthetics of the game, while Gabe offered the coding, puzzle design, and gameplay ideas. The two met in April 2018 on Tumblr, with Gabe approaching Yugo to work on an experimental indie game due to seeing her abstract and unique art style. Over the course of a year, the two worked together over long distance to create Smile For Me, and by May 31st of 2019, the game was fully released. The fact that this game was made in such a short time boggles my mind. Yugo gave the game its eccentric style, combining a bunch of different techniques to make the game a sort of collage style, on top of choosing to make Habit's morning announcements a live-action puppet sequence. Each character has a unique design and personality, almost reminding me of Danganronpa in some respects. No two characters feel the same, and even the characters with small quest lines are still memorable due to their individual quirks and designs. The gameplay mechanics fell to Lane, who created created the nod and shake adventure style. Most of the game's puzzles are built around conversations, making the nod and shake feel less like a gimmick and more like a tool to immerse the player. However, saying that you can only nod and shake is disingenuous. There are other actions that you need to use to advance the story and make these wacky characters smile. You may need to take photographs, mess with property, grow flowers, cheat at carnival games, or punch your way through problems. The game doesn't rely on its primary mechanic for every puzzle. Of course, it's impossible to ignore the work of Lucas Sauer and Will Savino, who created the soundtrack and SFX design respectively. The moment I heard the soundtrack, it immediately reminded me of the Little Big Planet games, which is one of the highest compliments I can give a soundtrack. Some tracks are floaty and upbeat, while others, like the carnival theme, lean into a jazzy smoothness that has me swaying my head whenever it comes on. All of the tracks carry a sense of surrealness to them, which perfectly complements the game's generally surreal aesthetic. Mm -hmm. 
Combine it all with the Banjo-Kazooie-esque character voices and you've got yourself a game that feels like it's straight out of a dream world. Smile For Me is primarily a feel-good game. After all, you're going around helping people regain their smiles, often learning about their past, their dreams, and things they feel like they haven't accomplished. But from the moment you start the game, there's a clear darkness under the hood that often pokes its head out whenever it feels like you're making people too happy. After all, the big event is coming, and we can't all miss that. I hesitate to call it a horror game, more that it has horror themes, but there are points where the game genuinely freaked me out, and one ending in particular is straight out of a horror game. The whole game is built to be unnerving, whether it be through the photorealistic teeth breaking up the soft colours, or the music having a tinge of sadness to it. While many of the characters' problems boil down to things like hating clowns or wanting a pet, there are others whose stories are a bit more real. Then again, my favourite character is Tim Tam, an anarchist child who speaks in single words and enlists you to destroy evidence of her thievery. Or on the opposite spectrum, you've got Petunia, a superhero obsessed little girl who has you gathering pieces of her costume to help her fight the green menace. The best thing about these characters is that there's no linear story. While you have to complete certain quests to unlock areas and receive items that unlock other quests, much of the game can be explored in whatever order you like. There's also a lot of optional content in the game that flesh out the characters even more. Ever wonder what Millie thinks of Nat? Show her a photo and see how she reacts. Seeing how the characters interact and react to one another is important for fleshing out their relationships, but also solving puzzles. On the surface, the habitat comes across as a place filled with childlike wonder, but beneath the surface, it's much more sinister. The characters also have their surface level personality, but they have much more going on. Ronbo is a clown meant to entertain people, but he can't get over his heartbreak. Gillis is a hulking security guard, but deep down, he's a big softie. Smile For Me is a game all about digging below the surface and seeing what you find. If I haven't sold you on the game yet, then there isn't much more that I can say to convince you. Except this. If you're watching this when the video comes out, the game is on a 50% off sale with all the proceeds going towards charity. On top of that, to celebrate the game's year anniversary, an epilogue website has been released with collaboration art from fans acting as a sort of where are they now segment. The amount of interaction and support the creators have with their fans is amazing, and I hope it follows them into whatever projects they make next. In a world where indie games have become more and more common, it can often be hard to find something that aims to be different and stand out from the bunch. Part multimedia art piece, part unique adventure game, and all around good time, Smile For Me is the definition of short but sweet. The game only takes a few hours to beat and has a price tag to match it. So if I've said anything in this video that tickles your fancy even a slight bit, I highly recommend clicking that button and joining the habitat. Thanks for watching this short review, uh, I kind of just wanted to put something out quickly because this sale is going on right now and I feel like that's kind of the perfect time to talk about it. Uh, if you've been convinced, I've left a Steam link in the description and also a link to the Itch.io page. If you buy it from Itch.io, all proceeds will go to charity, the Steam version Steam automatically take 30% cut from anything sold on the platform. So if you want to do that, either one works, but Itch.io just gives you a Steam key anyway. So you may as well buy it there. Give all the money to charity. It's only five fifty. Come on, you got this. Thank you. I will see you in a few weeks. I don't know when. Whenever this video comes out, who knows?